Um, here we are printing out um, part of a dinosaur, sorry, a T-Rex um, skeleton or skull. Now I'm running the bed at uh, 90 degrees and still having a few problems with uh, warping. The part itself is still cooling too much so it's actually coming away from the bed. So I put some weights on the stays. I put some stays on there um, to try and keep the part down as you can see and I've put some weights on the stays because the stays uh, came up as well so I had to put a weight on there. So I've got pretty good bed adhesion but there's so much pressure on the on the part coming up um, that it's actually still pulling off the off the bed. I'm using uh, I'm still using uh, plastic primer it seems to work quite well and I can run the bed at a lower temperature and um, I gave up trying to run it at 110 I had too much problem with the adhesion it was actually getting uh, it wasn't sticking too well plus it was costing a lot to heat the whole thing so I'm sort of happy with that I'm still um, looking to experiment with um, some infrared lights next to try and actually heat the part instead of trying to heat the whole enclosure in the air I'm going to try and heat the part so uh, to keep it, try and keep it from warping. So that'll be my next test. Just thought I'd show you the T-Rex skull. Uh, that's the first part that I printed, and it's actually made of a number of slices. I had a lot of misprints, so there's probably a good five slices there that are actually all glued together. You can see some of the seams there. I'm just coating it with, I'm just painting it with liquid ABS just to just to close all the gaps. Also you can see a lot of the shrinkage between the gaps. There's some pretty big gaps in there because I had a lot of warpage. So I'm still trying to improve that situation. Pretty big. It's probably only weighs about um, one and a half a kilo, one and a half kilos. And still needs a lot of work. So a couple more coats of uh, liquid ABS and I've still got to clean up some of the some of the bits and pieces. This is one of the slices of the T-Rex skull, so you can see how I'm printing it in, in sections. So this is actually uh, the top top of the next half of the skull, and the bottom part's printing at the moment. And yeah, as you can see, it's got a um, it's got a lot of holes in it. Uh, I've been painting it with liquid ABS to try and fill it up. So I've actually it's in really light. So what I've done is I've used one perimeter and 15% infill and one top and one bottom so that leaves it with a lot of holes uh, but it does print nice and quick and doesn't use much plastic so I'd rather just paint it up with liquid ABS afterwards save time and money so that's coming along quite nicely so for the next um, for the next extruder that I'm going to put on the printer I'm going to actually have a one and a half mil or a two mil nozzle I haven't quite decided yet and I'll probably print with uh, one perimeter and two tops and two bottoms for this sort of sculptural stuff. So it'll give it a bit more, uh, bit more infill and less holes. But obviously use a lot more plastic. Just thought I'd show you some of the completed uh, dinosaur prints. This is the T-Rex skull. It's been scaled up uh, three times. And um, it's... I just wanted to show you the, the thickness of the layer, it's extremely light, so it's 15% uh, infill, um, one perimeter, and one top and one bottom, so really, really light, not even enough to sort of make a, a solid top top layer, so it's sort of just the first bridging layer, that's sitting on top of the, the sparse infill, and so I'm just going to glue this together, so this is actually half the T-Rex skull, the, the, the upper half, so half of the upper half, you know, the top half of the skull and that's been sliced, that half's been sliced again into three and so I've actually got, got the other part here that's been glued together and I'm just giving it a coat of liquid ABS so just to show you again the liquid ABS how it fills all the holes so there's the bottle there so it's fairly thick um, sort of consistency of custard and yeah, so that's had one coat on that one. These have had no coats yet, so that's just the raw. You can see all the holes here, so it looks really horrific when it comes up. So a massive amount of holes because there's just one top layer, so there's, there's holes everywhere. And yeah, that's what it sort of comes out like. And that's that's only had one or two coats, so I'm going to give it several more coats of ABS, liquid ABS, just to, just 
just to make it all glossy and, and smooth. So yeah, so I'll show you again once it's done. One last thing I was going to show you is actually the um, infrared heaters. So this is actually a 150 watt infrared heater and an old um, downlight fitting which I'll try and use. And I'm going to put a, a um, adjustable arm on it so I can actually focus it to where I need it in the printer. And I'll probably put four of these in there so I'll have 600 watts of IR heat. And I'll probably mount a, a red um, bulb, red LED bulb next to it so it can actually give me an idea where it's actually focusing and shining.